You're probably wondering why I haven't spoken about water and rainfall. That's because there isn't any. Welcome back to another episode of Lulu's Perch. In this episode, we are going to charge out into the desert of Wadi Rum to find out how ancient Bedouin clans collected precious rainfall. And then we're going to head back to Jeff Lorden's garden to see how he has used some of this ancient knowledge to re-green the desert with a little welcome surprise at the end. Let's go. Welcome to Wadi Rum, a deep valley carved by millenniums of flash flooding and is inhabited by local Bedouin clans who have learned how to find and collect water before it's evaporated by the thirsty desert. Our Bedouin friend is out there somewhere, so we're off to go and find him. I'd be enjoying this much more if my bladder wasn't busted! So after hours of throwing seed bombs and chasing camels, we finally found him by an ancient Bedouin well called a Nagat, and he explained exactly how they work. We make this like for like, uh, keep it water here for the camel and uh, like the, also the animals. In the winter, we have we we keep it the water until the summer because in the summer we didn't have rain like in the like uh, mm. like in the winter we put it like small building close the close the mountain mm. and then all you know almost every all the mountain it's here in the desert they have like uh, like this the building so at the base of each waterfall the Bedouins have built a well that collects enough water to carry them through the summer so even in the driest of deserts, the Bedouins have hidden water sources in nearly every chasm, nook and cranny in Wadi Rum. While everyone else is dying of thirst, the Bedouins were practically bathing in it. But when all the wells had dried up by the end of summer, Bedouins had to rely on the rare natural water springs scattered all throughout Wadi Rum. One of these springs were made famous by British soldier and archaeologist Lawrence of Arabia in his diary Seven Pillars of Wisdom. Dying of thirst, he wrote, Its rushing noise came from my left by a jutting bastion of cliff over whose crimson face trailed long falling runners of green leaves. On the rock bulge above were clear-cut Nabathean inscriptions and a sunk panel in size with a monogram or symbol. Around and about were Arab scratches, including tribe marks, but my attention was only for the splashing of water in a crevice under the shadow of the overhanging rock. Upon the water-cleansed and fragrant ledge, I undressed my soiled body and stepped into the little basin to taste at last a freshness of moving air and water against my tired skin. It was deliciously cool. I lay there quietly, letting the clear, dark red water run over me in a ribbly stream and rub the travel dirt away. The next morning, <clears throat> sorry, the next morning we woke up in a Bedouin camp and observed the beautiful surroundings before heading back to the Green the Desert site. This is the Dead Sea. We get an average rainfall of about 50 to 100 millimeters a year. So we have to do absolutely everything we can to harvest as much rainwater as possible. I'm currently sitting in a swale that's level and on contour to catch all the rainfall that comes down the hill. But to fill a swale of this magnitude would take several hours of torrential rain. Now, that only comes maybe once a year, if that. So they've had to do something else. They are prepared for that torrential rain, but they've got a plan B. And their plan B, the little trick that they've got up their sleeve, is that each plant is connected on a miniature swale. And around each plant, it's almost like a little micro dam, a little turkey nest dam. It's like acts like a bowl. 
and they've got irrigation pipe that comes from grey water and all the water that we use for showers and washing our hands and whatnot. And the irrigation pipe just sprays it into that little bowl, the turkey nest dam, to water this plant specifically. And with enough mulch, we can protect it from the sun and life can carry on. So here we have the reed bed right here where all the grey water comes in. It comes in through this pipe right here filters through these big rocks and then overflows into the smaller rocks in the middle with all the water filtration reeds right there like Phragmitis, Astralis and Lamandra. And then it overflows into another set of big rocks before coming out another pipe at the back and going directly into the food forest. It's actually really comforting to know that every drop of water that I use is gonna be reused in the system somewhere down the line. First, all the fresh water goes to me for showering and drinking, and then it's gonna to go to the reed bed for filtration to get rid of all the bacteria. And lastly, it goes straight to the food forest to water all the trees. So it's actually pretty cool. Us having evening showers are cutting down the chores that we're gonna to have to do tomorrow. It's saving us time, money, and water. Wait, does that mean I now have a really good reason to pee in the shower? Uh, just ignore that. Uh, anyway, on the last day of the internship, we hadn't seen a drop of rain the entire time that we'd been there. Then, all of a sudden, something magical happened. It's about to rain. It only rains like once or twice a year. Oh, here it comes. Where did they all go? Oh, they might be on the roof. I think they are. They're on the roof. Oh, here it is. Oh, it's coming. Oh, that's crazy. Quick. No way. It's incredible how much of a peaceful break to the heat that the rain is. Everyone's mood changes. Everyone's got this weird smile on their face. It's just like, it's like a, a moment everyone's sharing together. It's beautiful. Respond to it. It's just been, you know, deluged. Yeah. When there's no evaporation at this temperature and a little bit of moisture does everything. Well, guys, that concludes another episode of Lulu's Perch. Next episode, we're going to be going from one desert to another as we say goodbye to Jeff Lawton and the Green the Desert site and going back to a drought stricken Lulu's Perch. So try get outside. Do a little rain dance and break that drought, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Catch ya. <laughs>